Uh, welcome everybody to the second annual DLD game show. The only session at uh, DLD where uh, beers for the participants is mandatory. So, uh, <laughs> before we start, I have to say that you know DLD is not only about fun and games. It's a very serious conference, and we're going to talk about some very serious and interesting topics. But rather than do it in the old-fashioned way of uh, passing the mic between panelists that are sitting on stage. We're going to gamify it a little bit and uh, spice it up, make it into an interactive experience. Uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, reintroduce our uh, contestants today. First, the person that was named by New York Magazine as the most feared and well-liked person in Silicon Valley. And she's going to intimidate you, intimidate you on stage today. Please welcome co-founder of Record, Kara Swisher. <laughs> Can I go up there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got to run. Then your way to the stage. All right. Uh, from New York City, a person that can communicate with robots, and as she'll soon, soon show you, her intelligence is everything but artificial. Please welcome co-founder and chief marketing officer of TopBots, Adeline Zhu. Thank you. Now, uh, we wanted to match these uh, two fine ladies with uh, uh, someone of equal caliber from the United Kingdom, which was a very uh, uh, tough task. Uh, and we ended up bringing the last person who didn't get the memo about print being dead, editor-in-chief of Wired UK, David Rored. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, David, uh, print, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys feel free to use the beer bottles. Don't touch the buzzers just yet. We'll explain the rules of the game as we go along. We will start the first round of our uh, uh, game show today will be uh, inspired by the American TV game show, The Price is Right. In the original game show, they are showing you a product and you have to guess what is the price of that product. We'll do a little <laughs> twist and take on that thing. We'll ask you different questions that have numeric answers. Each of you will provide uh, uh, the answer that, uh, uh, you know, their guess. And the person who's closest, the contestant whose guess is closest, but not even a dollar or a decimal above the actual number, uh, gets uh, 25 points. So uh, let's start. In 2016, we saw a lot of companies soar to high valuations. The undoubtful uh, biggest loser of 2016 was Yahoo that got acquired for less than $5 billion. And rumors say that when the deal will close, it will probably be much lower than that. Can any of you remember um, what was the highest valuation of Yahoo back in its glory days in 2000? Uh, no, 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 buzzer. It's like all of oh. you can answer. So, yeah. Kara, you, since you're so enthusiastic. I think it was $42 billion. $42 billion. I think it was around $42 billion. David, your guess? $28 billion. $28 billion. Uh, 50 billion. 50 billion. So here's how the game works. All contestants were equally clueless, but, <laughs> but you know, Adeline was the least clueless of them all, so she gets 25 points because Yahoo's value at its peak was no less than 125 billion. <laughs> oh, that was way better. And, and it seems That's ridiculous, cool. right? I mean, you're looking at it and saying, you know, who could have thought that this little company would be worth $125 billion? Do you think that in 17 years from today, We'll be looking at, let's say, uh, the 370 billion valuation of Facebook and, and, you know, and find it equally disconnected from reality? Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next question. <laughs> in, ca in case you want to elaborate, feel free. But if you want to make oh, it a yes or no question, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. inevitable. Okay. There's no tech company that goes past 15 years at this point, except Microsoft. And do you think really? that uh, this Intel. is uh, not only for Facebook specifically, but you know, are we really in a tech bubble? Do you think that today's valuations are uh, uh, in any way attached to, to the actual value of the companies? No. No. Who's going to be the first trillion dollar company? Well, Apple, I suppose. Definitely. He, they almost did it, right? Yeah. But they didn't do not it. Not quite. Probably not now. So. Right. Nobody. Well, hopefully our contestants will warm up with time, and you yeah. know, maybe they're so <laughs> preoccupied. Yes. They're so, you know, they're so in it for the win that you know they forgot that they're also to provide uh, here to provide some intellectual stimulation. Uh, yeah, let's make sure they drink a little bit more right. and move to the yeah. next question. So, uh, with uh, Snapchat looking at a 25 billion dollars IPO uh, in the next few months, uh, we are looking at Instagram that. In the, last, in the past couple of months, is beginning to look very, very similar to Snapchat. According to, I have to quote the right source, so I make sure that I ask the question correctly. According to 
uh, Bank of America, Mary Lynch, Analyst, Justin Post, and Joey Strand. What is the current value of Instagram had it been a standalone company? Nineteen billion dollars, I think. Nineteen? I think it was nineteen. How about you, David? Twenty-five billion. Twenty-five billion. And twenty-nine billion. Twenty? Twenty-nine billion. Twenty-nine billion. And the correct answer would be. Oh, wow. 37 billion. <laughs> so, once again, yeah. Adeline wins the jackpot. <laughs> take Good for you, Adeline. I know, now, double up. Now, what do you, you know, Kara, from your standpoint, yeah. when you look at the way that, uh, that Instagram is adapting so many concepts that uh, uh, Snapchat originated. It's a really nice way of saying cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want to elaborate? I mean, do you feel that this is really uh, uh, sort of uh, Facebook is taking off the gloves and is going straight into a direct war to prevent or to uh, uh, temper with Snapchat's IPO? Uh, no, I just think they don't have any new ideas, and so they take the ones that are working with young people. You know, Snapchat, I don't think it'll be successful because that's what Microsoft tried to do. That's what everybody tries to do. Um, and so they're trying to, they're doing a nice fast follow. It's called fast follow, essentially. They're good so, at slow following as well. Yeah, I they're mean, good at slow following. It, it took them a couple of years to get mobile, and then a couple yeah. of years to get messaging. They had to spend 19 billions, and then a couple of years to copy WeChat. Yeah. They've been trying to follow Snapchat. I mean, they tried to acquire Snapchat first years yeah. ago when Snapchat said, hell no. And then they tried to do it like uh, instant or the paper and yeah. all those different versions. They tried a lot of things yeah. and they never, they haven't worked so well, far. It was recently published, you know, I saw just a couple of days ago that now the uh, uh, Instagram stories feature yeah. have as many, has as many daily active users of as course. Snapchat stories. Well, because it's so enormous. So it does work in terms of, you know, they were able to replicate the traction. Well, it's because they have, they're starting with a number that's so huge, they're going to get, if they didn't get that money, many, you'd be disappointed with them because they've got so many people pointing at it that they, from their Facebook service, it seems like, it, I mean, that's what big companies do, copy innovative small companies. But the most innovative companies still to me, as we were just talking backstage, is WeChat and all the innovative stuff they've done on their service. And it's true for other, uh, you know, I don't know how uh, closely have you been following the, um, uh, sort of Asian companies in the mobile space, but it's true that the mobile innovation is usually coming out from the East and Absolutely. gets adopted in the Western uh, Hemisphere much later. Absolutely. Definitely. And even Snapchat is being re innovated in Asia by uh, companies such as Snow. If you've ever checked out Snow, it has hundreds of filters versus Snapchat only has like 10 filters yeah. that you oh, can use. Only 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but you can check that out too. Yeah. So, it's very right, nice. people, Let's see great. if our contestants yeah. are able to uh, try and give Adeline uh, uh, a proper fight in the next few questions. So, we're staying on uh, Instagram, and uh, according to uh, according to eMarketer, what percentage of U.S. businesses, U.S. companies, will use Instagram as a marketing platform this year in 2017? Mm. So we're looking, you know, the answer has to be between zero and a hundred, just in case you don't, you know, don't understand how percentage work. I have no fucking idea. Um, All right. <laughs> what is considered a business like SMB or large? Any, any, any corporation. 30%. 30. 55. David? 18%. 18? <laughs> 18? <laughs> one eight or 80? One eight. eight, zero. One eight. Uh, it looks like there's only one person here that kind of realized how this game works. <laughs> <laughs> The correct answer would be 70%. <laughs> 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 so that's pretty monstrous. Here's the, you know, here's a, here's a giveaway. Uh, we are staying on the topic of social media and moving to the next question, yeah, talking about number. online videos. <laughs> so Facebook so made strides into becoming the dominant platform for uh, um, presentation or viewing of online video and uh, overcame YouTube in terms of number of daily videos being viewed. While YouTube reported uh, about 5 billion video views a day. What would be that number on Facebook today? Oh, you're going first. <laughs> <laughs> so if YouTube had 5 billion, and so what is Facebook, which has yeah. more than, so the bottom is 5 billion. 7.3 billion. That's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 7.3, David. 23 billion. Oh, nice. <laughs> 12 billion. 12 billion. The correct answer is... 8 billion. <laughs> oh. I swear. <laughs> wow. 
So uh, just to say, it's still all, uh, you know, it's still a very open competition, just so you know <laughs> everything can change. You know, it's a very tight race. It's gonna go down to the wire, bear with us. Is this? <laughs> um, uh, I can't yeah. comment on that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about I, I won the uh, electoral college. You know, college. it's like in an attempt to fail Adeline and make it a bit more in an even playing yeah. field, let's talk about her area of expertise. Right. So talking about bots, bots definitely made a splash this year and are becoming uh, part of the conversation and slowly becoming part of the daily usage of uh, everything we do. How much did that translate into investment? And specifically, my question is... Okay, this is, is someone who has a bot company, right? <laughs> All right, okay. Lisa, we, we had one about media as well. I didn't see that right, uh, play okay. to the advantage right, of the media people. Go ahead. So, uh, what is, uh, to show you know, that the media know nothing? What is the total nothing? dollar amount that was invested in bot companies in 2016? Yeah. David, why don't you take this one first? Since you're doing so well. Glo globally? <laughs> yeah. 3.7 billion dollars. Mm. Um, no, you go next. <laughs> she knows. So I don't know. 30, 30, uh, I don't know. 30 million. 30, 30 million? million? You, you're trying. I'm low volley. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, one, <laughs> 1.2 billion dollars. 1.2 billion. And the correct answer is. <laughs> Watch. Let's see. Oh. 170 million. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, listen, this, this round okay. is going phenomenally well. I have to tell you, the other two rounds that we have are completely different rules, so they may speak to the advantages of, uh, of other people uh, among our contestants. Last question in this, uh, in this fashion. Uh, looking ahead for this year, uh, it's anticipated that many companies such as Pinterest and Spotify will go public. According to their last valuation on their last round that was closed in March of 2016, what was the valuation of Spotify? These people really know their numbers. No, because we don't like, think uh, about you know, stupid tech press are very number oriented. Um, yeah. I think they were. I thought it was seven billion dollars. Seven billion dollars. Seven billion. Eighteen billion. 32 billion. 32 billion. Okay. So it's ke it keeps climbing up. And the correct answer is. Ah, mm. sing. <laughs> Finally, we've got, we've got some competition going. So uh, at the end of this round, we have uh, uh, Kara with 25 points, Adeline with 125 <laughs> points, and uh, my you know, personal bet on a winner for this uh, competition, David. Okay. You're doing really well with uh, no point for the moment. Good job, David. <laughs> What is, uh, you know, be before we sign it off to the next round, so, you know, we mentioned chatbots, and, you know, Adeline, this is an area that uh, uh, your company covers. What do you see, you know, we all know that, uh, we all Don't see that, uh, that was Kara taking a selfie with, <laughs> no. with the scoreboard. <laughs> Just keep it off the record. We all On see Instagram chatbots stories. are being used for practical reasons, such as uh, ordering an Uber or ordering a yeah. cheeseburger, and uh, as we spoke behind the scenes before we started, uh, now used for, for some... Uh, advanced practical usages such as filing insurance claims. When do you think that we'll see them uh, coming for use in the content industry? Really becoming a way for publishers to interact with their audiences uh, through chatbots. I think it's already here. Yeah, it's here. In last year, in 2016, CNN had over 4.6 million people use Line to interact with their bots. Um, and so that was way more than they had ever imagined. Yeah. So. If Millions of people are now already using it to interact with, you know, Wall Street journals, tech crunches. I think, do you guys yeah. have one Vox too? Media has yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, they're a chatbot. So I think it's already here. It's a way to deliver content uh, that's relevant to people based on their personalizations and what they like into their, directly into their uh, messaging apps. And I'm ready to be replaced by a bot <laughs> anytime you want. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a little rocky though. It hasn't been the perfect experience. I know we had some issues around Facebook and yeah. the, it, the technology was difficult and that didn't deliver. The, it's easier when you're ordering a, whatever a cheese booger is. Um, but the, uh, it's easier when you're doing things like answering simple questions. It's harder, it's harder to do it when it's more specific. But basic facts, certainly, it's great. And Alexa, too, if you think yeah. about Alexa as a 
bot or a chat bot in some way of artificial intelligence. Most people use it these days as the first thing in the morning to get their news briefings and stuff. Right. So, so yeah, that's popular. exactly right. And do you find that, you know, so you, you made it, you know, you at Vox Media, and I don't know, David, about you at Wired, you know, you made it available uh, to the public to use. Do you find that the adoption is more than just the anecdotal early adopters who test a new toy? Do you feel that it's really becoming a way for people, a more personal way, a, you know, in a way, a better way for well, people like to Alexa, interact with media? Well, like Alexa, is a really good example. We have, we have it on Alexa, and when it's not, some days we don't do it every day to update things, and people write me, like, where was your update on Recode and stuff? Um, so I think when you get more of these voice-activated things that people are actually interacting with versus the more wonky iterations, like, I have I, Google, Google Home or Alexa. I love Alexa. It's my favorite thing that I own right now. Um, and once you start to get used to interacting that way, it's how you interact with everything. It's just that voice has been so bad for so many years. I mean, my Siri literally is the dumbest woman on the planet or man. <laughs> um, but when it starts to get really good, it really is super helpful. I think it is. I think it's an amazing yeah. way to interact with all kinds of requests. Great. Moving on to the next stage, we're going to play an entirely different game, and here's how it goes. We call it the Would You Rather game. Uh, we have posted on uh, playbus.com and across our network of publishers a series of survey questions asking more than 10,000 tech and media professionals, such as the, our uh, distinguished contestants on stage, uh, about their personal preference. And they answered, you know, whether they rather A or B. We'll see the, the questions in a second. Your job now is to guess, not, you know, not to state your own personal preference. I will actually ask uh, each of you individually. Uh, you will all answer only uh, two of those questions. And you have to guess what did people choose. So this is about your understanding or you know, how much were you able to predict what is the current mindset in the industry about these topics. Now, to make things even more confusing, the scoring here is going to get a little bit funky. Uh, if you do choose... Uh, if you choose the wrong answer, I mean, if you choose the less popular options, you're going to get no points. If you do choose the right one, the popular one, the number of points you're going to get will be equal to the percentage of uh, users who chose that option. So people can get very different uh, uh, kind of scores. And to make sure that you guys are not falling asleep, we also embedded some questions that are not directly related to your areas of expertise. So here's an example, just so you can see how it works before we get started. We're asking, uh, we, we ask, let's, let's put this question to the audience. What do you think people answered? Would they rather have incredibly slow Wi-Fi for the rest of their lives or use this, you know, old-fashioned feature phone for the next 10 years? Uh, Who thinks it was Wi-Fi, slow Wi-Fi? The first one, you have to live in the United States of America, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who thinks that it was the, uh, the old phones? Okay, many more people. So no, let's see, were they correct? Indeed. Wow. You would have gotten 90 points had you participated. All right. First question, and uh, this question goes to David. David, we asked, we asked our audience, would you rather only consume content in the long, you know, old-fashioned format of long articles, or only be able to flip through your social feed and see just a headline and a thumbnail? What do you think they, uh, uh, they replied? What do you think they answered? Sadly, B. <laughs> Sadly, B. So I think people do prefer to, uh, to look at their feed. And do you find, you know, you're still writing um, articles in what we call the old-fashioned model, right? <laughs> you can really yep. Long researchers, you know, you invest a lot in every story. You really, you know, do put a lot of effort behind. Do you have any way of tracking readability or kind of understanding how much of it people actually consume? The only people reading Wired now are bots. <laughs> <laughs> or both creators, for that matter. Your audience is um, very uh, technical. The way a Condé Nast works is um, we go in the chauffeur-driven limousine to their house, knock on their door, and ask them if they read the full piece. <laughs> Takes about three years to get the data back. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Sounds like, sounds like a great business model. So David, David replied that uh, answer B. Let's see what was the correct answer. That's close. Yeah. David, congratulations. Yeah. This is, I think, uh, hey, David, here's, uh, cheers, yeah. your, first, your first few points. Cheers. That's because <laughs> people want to say they're reading long articles. Do you know what I mean? People want to pretend that that's what they're doing. Versus... Oh, I think, you know, in this case, people said that uh, they're rather the more comfortable flipping through their social feed and just getting No, but getting it was close. It was super close. You'd think it, it would not be. It was, and you'll see that in, in, many, you know, in many of their results, the, the, the results could be surprising. Kara, the next one is for you. So we asked people, 
would they rather never be able to use any Apple products or Google products? Which oh. one of them was easier for people to give up on? That's a tough one. They would give up Apple. Give up Apple. <laughs> All right, and the, uh, the audience answered? Oh, wow. Oh. So it was very tight. As you can see, they were both 50%, but you have answered correctly because there were a few answers more. You know, the one in the dark blue was the correct answer. So you do get 50 points. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Adeline, a question for you that, uh, you know, I see no one, no one uh, in a better position to answer. Oh. Would people rather have Trump's hair for the rest of the month? Or to wear the, you know, die-hard gray t-shirt, <laughs> gray Zuckerberg t-shirt for the rest of their lives. Wear Zuckerberg's t-shirt. The Zuckerberg t-shirt. Are you sure? Is this your final answer? Yes. Are you sure? Okay. And the audience answered? Uh, you know your audience. 52 <laughs> points for Adeline. Kara, you're up next. So in light of some privacy concerns, would you say people would have rather making all of their private messages on Snapchat go to the public? or expose all of their emails? Oh, wow. Uh, emails. 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 People yeah. will know about emails. We're Let used me ask to that you, now. You know, on, on the topic of privacy in general, which is always an interesting topic, and you know, we've seen from the emergence of WikiLeaks into the political scandals and other things, in today's reality, when all of your life are practically managed in the cloud, how feasible are those privacy concerns, and how much do you find yourselves or organizations actually taking measures in order to uh, protect that privacy? I don't think there is any privacy anymore. So at all? No. I think anything is discoverable at this point. And so we, you take moves. I have two-factor authentication and all kinds of encryption. But unless you really encrypt things seriously, you're, it's done. It's done. Anytime you click on one of Yossi's emails to accept an invitation to one of his <laughs> conferences, he yeah. plants spyware on yeah. your device. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, so. that's factually very true. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Kara voted for emails, and the correct answer is... Oh, wow. Oh, snaps, really? Could be some bias, though, for the fact that tech professionals are probably not the uh, classic no, Snapchat but why users. Would, that's why people use Snapchat, so they don't get... I know, when people say, you know how uh, uh, for, you know, for us parents, we say that we don't get Snapchat? Snapchat was invented as a vanishing pix application so yeah. kids can communicate without their yeah. parents spying on them. It was meant so we don't understand it. Yeah. Do, you get, do you guys use Snapchat at all? Yeah. yeah, you do? Totally. And you actually use it only because you want to keep up with the millennials? Or no, do I you like actually it. use it? No, do you I find like it, it to be a viable tool for your yeah, usage? Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's not true that old people don't understand it. That's so ridiculous. Um, um, All right, I, I touched the cord there. I could see it. So. I yeah. use my typewriter. Ah, like, come on. Like, uh, now you see why, why she was named the most frightening woman in Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> it's I mean, funny that people think that. Say, I you use Snapchat, Snapchat really and I'm not fun. that old. Snapchat's so, yeah. really fun. You should use it. It's, it's harder to understand if you haven't used it. Just, it's just like using anything else, but you should use it. It's super fun. Yeah. And DLD has a pretty good Snapchat thing, too. They were, yeah. like, updating, like, oh, cool. every 10 minutes. So it's pretty fun to follow. That's cool. David, a question for you, an intellectual question, because I see, you know, you're doing very well, so we want to uh, make it hard for you a little bit. Would people rather never to use spell check again or never to use the other one again? Ew. So I think people would give up spell check because the only time they ever use spell check is when they're writing an email applying for a job. And as we know, there are no jobs anymore because the AIs have taken them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, you know, they, they have disclosed some of his uh, uh, hygiene habits as part of that answer. So he was voting for spell check. Yeah. And the audience was very much with you. Yeah. Uh, and just like that, we'll soon see the uh, uh, summary of score. David catching up. Big part of the gap. <laughs> so just to show you how funky can it get. Next question is for you, Adeline, and it's about uh, advertisement. So what do people find more annoying? Would they rather uh, have video pre-rolls before every video they watch or those uh, overlay pop-ups that cover an article when they're reading text? Both so annoying. I know. <laughs> pop-up ads when you're reading an article. They would prefer the pop-up ads on the article yes. than video. And yeah. Oh, yeah. oh the country. <laughs> I don't think, you know, maybe we should say that people don't really read text anymore. <laughs> so they don't, <laughs> yeah, they don't know what it is. Uh, next question for you, Kara. This is uh, intellectually stimulating. What? Would people rather use, um, use eye drops made, <laughs> made of vinegar or use toilet paper made from sandpaper? 
These, these are the pressing questions you're asking our nation's <laughs> youth. That's great. Um, I have no fucking idea on this one. People? <laughs> Which one? I, dro I guess eye drops of vinegar. You wouldn't uh, want your to use sandpaper. Well, you actually have sandpaper too. Or contacts or something like yeah, that. Yeah, eye drops made of vinegar. I don't know. Well, she has spoken, and let's see, and uh, the audience has said, yeah, wow. totally. Does you know your vinegar. Is this fair like according to Democrats or Republicans? <laughs> well, <laughs> well the, the tech, you know, media tech industry. So, you know, we only put it on uh, media tech publications or publications that yeah. address uh, the industry in general. Well, Donald uh, Trump as president is like toilet paper made of sandpaper. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waiting for it, you know. Yeah. I was wondering when it's going to come up. Uh, <laughs> David, question, last question for you. Um, and then we have another one for Adeline. People would people rather... Uh, only be able to use Instagram stories or Snapchat stories. As we said, they are becoming more and more alike. Which one of them do people find more appealing? So I'm kind of with Kara on the original Beats, the copycats. So I'm with Snapchat. Snapchat. And the answer is? Oh. Oh. Almost. Wow. Uh, and Adeline, last one for you. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's an intellectual question. If you could, uh, if people, you know, would people rather go into the future to see what tech is going to look like in the hundred years from today, or play the trick of going back a hundred years in time and invent, you know, cell phones and internet and some of the technologies that became so paramount? Oh, it depends on how, yeah, if they want to go back in time, then they like invest in themselves and become billionaires. I could see them wanting to do that. Yeah, maybe that. People want to be... Uh, spoken like a true entrepreneur. And uh, the audience selected? First one. Oh. So it was very, very even, but you do get 50 points because you were just a tiny bit. Uh, just a few years, as, a few years as, uh, answered above. What is really, you know, speaking of which, when you guys look at um, new ideas, entrepreneurial ideas, and you guys are covering not only the uh, giants of the industry, but also a lot of innovation, um, it's very likely that when you meet a young company, whatever it is that they do, whichever concept they're selling you is going to evolve a hundred times before it will even see the light of day. How much, you know, how much weight, how, in, how much importance do you, uh, do you give to the actual concept? Or, a, you know, maybe at an early stage, it's more about the entrepreneurs themselves and the uh, field they operate in. I usually wait till they have a slide saying we are a machine learning company. If they're making toilet brushes, <laughs> it has to be a machine learning toilet brush. <laughs> then I'll invest. So you're investing in buzzwords generators. <laughs> I think it's both. I think you can't yeah. ignore both. I don't go on people's, necessarily their records at all, because you don't know what the ideas are going to come from. But I do remember when I met the Google guys in their garage, and there were hundreds, not hundreds, but a dozen search companies. And everyone's like, what, what do we need another search company? And I remember thinking, these guys are special um, because of the way they talked about it. At the same time, when someone told me about eBay for the first time, I was like, I don't, I don't understand that at all. So you don't, like, you don't, I didn't get yeah. that in any way. Um, but, and when I met Mark for the first time, it was very clear he was going to win. It was super clear for some reason that he, was, that he had a concept that was better. Interesting. But at the time, his concept was a uh, was very rudimentary version yeah. of what we see today, right? Yeah, did but he described the no, whole vision called, or did he describe he just did. the vision? He did. He called it, I remember, um, when I met him for the first time, I had been brought over there when he had just gotten to Silicon Valley and his CEO at the time said, you should meet Mark Zuckerberg. He has this new thing that's going to be really popular. And... I said, oh, I've heard he's an asshole. I don't really want to meet him. <laughs> um, and so I walked in the room, and I did it anyway. And he walked in the room, and I, he introduced himself. And he goes, I hear you think I'm an asshole, which wasn't really nice. And I said, I don't know you well enough to think you're an asshole yet, but I'm sure I will in time. But he, um, he talked about it as a utility. I'll, I'll never forget that. He talked about it as a daily utility, and I thought that was the smartest thing I'd heard from someone. He didn't talk about it, and he's like, he said, Facebook it will be a utility that people will use every day. And he described essentially what it is today then. So he had the same concept. Um, and so I thought he was, that, was, that was not something someone would say, a 22-year-old, a, a or however old he was at the time, would call something, I'm making a utility. Like, that sounds dull, but he did, and that's what it is.
Well, little did you know that a few years later you're going to be uh, making famous for sweating on stage. Ah, that's right. In another, uh, all right. And, uh, okay, great. So at the end of uh, round two, we have uh, uh, a massive change in the yeah. scoring oh, system. Oh, yeah. uh, not really. I mean, Adeline yeah. is still way ahead of the others, but the others no longer look pathetic. So, you know, there is okay. some uh, evolution going on. And the good news are that if you guys still want to win, the third and final round is your chance, because in this round, we're actually going to utilize those uh, fancy buzzers we gave okay. you. And only the first person to hit the buzzer uh, will actually be seen. You know, immediately it cancels the others. I'm going to uh, throw a bunch of questions at you. And with every question that I'm, uh, with every question that I'm uh, going to show you, uh, only the first one that uh, clicks the buzzers can answer it. And when they do, they'll get 50 points if they answered correctly but they will be subtracted 50 points if they answered oh. incorrectly. Oh. So, you know, so we can go into the I guess for, yeah. uh, for you, Adeline, you may want to uh, play it safe. <laughs> for the others, you know, you've got nothing to lose. Uh, you may as well get it. So we're going to talk about fake news. But before oh. we actually uh, go to the questions themselves, everybody's talking about fake news since the election. Were fake news really the reasons for the election's result? Was it really a contributor or was it kind of a unnoticeable side effect. What, what do we know? What do numbers show about that? Well, it doesn't really. I mean, that's the problem with it. It's insidious. I mean, of course it had an impact. It just, it's a question of how much impact, what it did. But I think the, more of the issue is it kept people in their own lanes. So the people who, like Trump, believed all the awful Hillary Clinton stuff, people who liked uh, Hillary believed all, well, a lot of the stuff was awful about Trump, but um, they, they stuck in their lane. So I think it absolutely had an impact. And so saying it was kind of an echo chamber effect of, you know, everybody was... Not just was that, is that it, like Facebook, I've said this many times, Facebook has a responsibility as a media platform and they pretend they're not. You okay. know, they, they abrogate all responsibility. Um, you know, Google's able to take down this stuff pretty quickly, but they have, another, they have other issues, technical and... Their commitment to users is to let them post anything they want, so they have a more difficult problem. But they certainly uh, had a responsibility to clean up some of this trash that was all over. But that that one happens to be true. But, once, uh, once you create confusion in general, then when there's a serious scandal, people just don't believe it enough. Yeah, right. And then it gets people to say, that's your... One time, there was one up there that... I have a lot of relatives in West Virginia. Nothing against West Virginia, but a lot against West Virginia. Um, and they, there was a one about Hillary being a lizard person. She was an actual lizard person. Um, and w one of my cousins said, oh, she's a, you know, a lizard person. And I was like, what? Like, and they were like, I said, no, that's not true. And they're like, that's your opinion. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So you lose everything when that's Every, just, Everything yeah. is debatable. So you bring up the question of, you know, is, uh, is it Facebook's responsibility? I guess what yes. you're saying is that since... Since, these fake news, since today news are distributed on primarily through Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, and since in the old world it was all about the credibility of the, of the publication, but today we no longer go to the publication, we just meet it on Facebook, then we expect the distribution platform to be the mediator that calls out the, uh, the appropriate from the inappropriate. Uh, and, you know, what do you think, uh, since media reliability is in an all-time low in the consumer's view, Maybe you, know, maybe you guys, maybe your more traditional publications had some contribution to the emergence of fake news in the sense that people view, people kind of believe that today everything is commercialized. So even what, you know, what we call real news or not fake news is not as reliable as it used to be. I, I don't think anyone liked the press before. I think this is, they've always, go look at our history, like just US history, there's always been attacks on the press. Nixon administration, uh, Spiro Agnew called the press nattering nabobs of negativism. Um, look what happened to him, indicted. Look what happened to Nixon, indicted. You know what I mean? Like these people do use the press as a whipping post so that they can take away focus from their own problems. And I think that's precisely what's going to happen here, that, that Trump will continue to do this and attack the press, and eventually he'll do something that's actually illegal or possibly illegal. And so I think they just do it because it's easy. It's like saying you hate lawyers or whatever. It's just typical. It's cynical and horrible, but that's what they do. All right. Great. We're Thank negative. You. Yes, the press is negative. Yes. So sorry. <laughs> Things are not good all over the world. So. Perfect. Thank you. So with that, we're going to see how, uh, you know, how uh, good is your uh, fake news dar, uh, detectors. Uh, be ready to hit the buzzer. The first question is already on the screen. This is coming from The Independent. 
Donald Trump kicks baby out of his rally in Virginia for crying. Did that actually happen or this is fake news? David. It happened. It happened. Yeah. Did yeah. it really happen? Yeah. Let's yes. check. Yes. It did. Great. 50 yes. points for David. <laughs> uh, next question. Put your fingers on the buzzer and be ready. From ABC News. Did the Amish community decided um, together that they're going to vote for Trump? Kara? Fake. Fake news. Are you calling ABC News fake? Uh -huh. Well, that's, uh, it happens to, yeah, that's true. Correct answer, 50 points for Kara. Um, next one. I like the Amish too. From CNN, so giant gold letters that spell Trump fall from the buildings. David. True. 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 Did that really happen? Yeah. Wow, these guys know uh, yeah, true news from fake news. Good job, great, 50 points for David. The next one, number four from uh, blah, blah, blah. Obama cuts 2.6 billion in funding and moving to Syrian refugees. Did he really do that, Kara? It's fake, it's fake. He did not do that, did he? No, he did not, 50 points for Kara. Adeline, I, I feel like you're not really, uh, you know, <laughs> you're not watching <laughs> over your lead. You know, I just wanna say, you know, it could be more fragile than you think. Um, oh. <laughs> Okay, next. Ooh, okay. Next question. <laughs> I like to read the news. So, yeah. did Donald, CNN, did Donald Trump actually call Hillary Clinton the devil, Adeline? Real. Real. He actually called her the devil? Yes, he he did. sure did. He sure did. Oh, wow. So, before we go to the last one, let's, let's take a look at the score because this is the very last question that's going to determine the winner. And oh. it's. Uh, <laughs> by the way, everybody can still win. Right. So if I were you, the moment we show them, we just hit the buzzer and take a guess. That's the plan. Because, uh, Thank you. You know, this is how it's going to go. Ready? Let's have the last one. Last question. So did Mike Pence actually said Michelle Obama is the most vulgar first lady we've ever had? Who clicked? Uh, that is fake. He is an awful person, but he does, he's polite. Wait, 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 wait. Who clicked the buzz? Was it Kara? Yeah. Okay. And Kara said that this is fake, fake and you are correct. Which means oh. that at the end of this uh, <laughs> fancy game show... <laughs> let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Hey. For the way. Uh, David Bowen has, you know, uh, put, uh, just created great <laughs> reputation for the people of the United Kingdom. Thank you, David. Uh, Adeline Zo gave a great fight Aww. and was almost you well know, able to beat the Masters in their own she game. Knows, she knows her valuations because she's an entrepreneur. <laughs> That's true. But the ultimate winner, the ultimate winner that's going to be rewarded here on stage, uh, you know, and if I were you, I would take out your cameras because this is going to be very no, no, visual. No, 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 no. Yes, no. it is. Yay! It's Kara. And Kara, we are now crowning you as... <laughs> oh, no. That's not happening. It is the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that. I was just at an event, Bits and Pretzels, and they may, tried to make everyone wear lederhosen and that kind of stuff. Um, and I did, <laughs> and I... Everyone. <laughs> Thank you. <Yay! laughs> Thank you very much. By the way, I was really hoping that David is going to win. Oh, ow. Thank you. Thank you so right, much. Thank you so much. Thank so you. This was the second. I'm going to give it to you, though.